Hi and welcome back to Canada Top to Bottom. Today we're starting a new series about the process of moving to Canada and we're going to start by explaining what you need to do before you even arrive in the country. Uh, in future videos we'll talk through bank accounts, driving licenses, tax and all the other things you'll need to sort out. But today we're going to run through your task list once you know you're coming to Canada and are getting ready for the big day. Firstly, and this might sound obvious, you're going to need to speak a good level of either English or French. We've got a playlist all about language tests for moving to Canada and you can find the link to it above. But regardless of what language score you needed to move here, the better your language skills, the easier it is to make a life here. If you aren't a fluent speaker of either French or English, you can still move to Canada under some immigration streams, but you're going to struggle once you arrive. Going about your everyday life is a huge struggle when you don't speak the local language, and we know because we've previously moved to countries where we can barely communicate with the locals. Go to language classes, take courses online, and read, watch, and listen to as much of the language as you can. Being a fluent English or French speaker will open up far more work and social opportunities than arriving with the bare minimum. While you're working on your language skills, it's also a good idea to get your official documents in order. Keep all originals, translations and certified documents that you collect along your immigration journey. You just never know when you might need them again. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list and the nature of how you're immigrating to Canada will affect exactly what you need, but pretty much everyone coming here will need to make sure that they've got the original copies of their passports and birth certificates for the whole family, educational certificates and transcripts, marriage and or divorce certificates, driving licenses, banking details, including the proof of funds required for your immigration stream, insurance policies where appropriate, and medical and dental records, including vaccinations, especially important for children starting school or daycare. Now, if you can't get hold of original copies of these documents, then at least make sure that you order replacements and have high quality scans or PDFs. Getting documents once you're outside your home country is often harder than getting them from within it. So lining all these documents up and making sure they're all current is a task to do before you arrive in Canada. Bear in mind that you might need to get some documents translated by a certified translation service and you also might need to have your academic qualifications officially assessed too. So get all that done before you come to Canada. Any legal document which is not in English or French will need to be officially translated uh, not just by one of your friends but by a certified translation company and if your academic qualifications will be forming part of your immigration application any studies completed outside of Canada will need an official assessment to give them an equivalence in Canada make sure that you have copies of any relevant documents for any family members who are arriving in Canada after you having all the documents you could need for any eventuality will make life much less stressful for you even if it turns out that you didn't actually need all of them. Also, double check that you have all the documents you'll need at the Canadian border, such as your confirmation of permanent residence, proof of funds and health insurance, if applicable. Before arriving in Canada, you can also organize your accommodation and potentially your employment too. Depending on the nature of your immigration program, you might have a job lined up before you arrive in Canada, or you might be legally permitted to organize one so that it will be waiting for you. Even if you don't have a job lined up, you can still contact potential employers, make yourself known to them, and discuss the possibility of working for them once you're legally resident in Canada. You might also consider doing some extra training, depending on the feedback you receive from potential employers. And one other element to bear in mind is that your qualification from your home country might not be valid in Canada. So it might be necessary to take extra courses or complete further training so that they're relevant and quantifiable to Canadian employers. Regardless of your specific situation, take a good look at the Job Bank of Canada, which is an amazing resource. We've got a video explaining how to use the Job Bank in different ways, so check out the link to that video above and look in the description box below for a link to the Job Bank itself. As for accommodation, Airbnb, Facebook Marketplace and various other letting agencies allow you to organize a place to stay before you arrive in Canada. Having accommodation waiting for you makes life so much easier compared to staying in a hotel and being under pressure to find somewhere to stay at short notice. When we got to Canada, we'd already organized a condo for us to live in for the first six months, and it really took the pressure off us when we first arrived. 
There's so much that you need to think about when you first arrive in Canada, so make sure that accommodation isn't one of them. If you've got kids, then you'll probably need to line up schools or daycare from them. Kids in Canada are assigned to a year group based on the calendar year in which they were born and they start kindergarten in the September of the year in which they turn five, although you can defer this for one year if you choose. Be aware that for September enrolment, school application opens at the end of January in some provinces, so you may need to start thinking about schools earlier than you expected. Make sure you check the deadlines for applying to schools and get a place organised for your kids before turning up in Canada. The next topic to consider is health insurance. There is universal health care in Canada, but there can be some long waiting times and you might want to consider some sort of additional health coverage. It's also really important to remember that there is approximately a three month gap between activating your permanent residence and being covered by the Canadian healthcare system. So you will need to get private insurance to cover those three months. The details of who has access to free healthcare varies according to the nature of your visa and the province that you're moving to. So make sure you understand what you'll get, when, and what additional coverage you might need. Finally, do as much research about Canada and Canadian life as possible before you arrive. Make sure you're equipped for cold temperatures in winter, learn about the history and culture of the province you're moving to, and educate yourself on how the administrative system works. Moving to a new country is already a huge challenge, so arming yourself with as much knowledge as possible will make life as easy as it can be. Regardless of how you move to Canada, we hope we've given you some help with preparing. It's worth all the effort in the end, so get organised, get educated and enjoy the journey. Make sure you hit subscribe if you want high quality Canada-related content every Wednesday and Sunday, and we'll see you next time.